Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting. It's very good to be uh, participating in an in-person event after this long time of online meetings. So I'm going to talk about how anyone can search the past web with archive.pt. Okay, so basically anyone can go here at this address and try it after my presentation. So who, who are we? We are a free online service to research the past web and we preserve publicly uh, accessible information related to Portugal, but also to research and education content. So in this case, we preserve international content. Um, we are a governmental service provided by the Foundation for Science and Technology and we are a digital research infrastructure. So the project began in 2007. I've been working in web archiving since 2001, but the project formally began in 2007. Um, and it is uh, used worldwide. So about half of our users are international, not, not Portuguese. Uh, and all our user interfaces and documentation are available in Portuguese and in English to facilitate that anyone can use it. And even if you find the content that is written in Portuguese, these days you can use tools like Google Translate to um, to make um, to translate the content and enable cross-language access to the preserved content. Um, this um, this is the oldest page that we have. It's from the 1993. It's from a, from a Portuguese university, and on the right is the oldest image that we have. That is from 1992. So the, the one on the left is from Portuguese university, and the one on the right is from NADSA. It's quite interesting. So an example of a national and an international content that we have. So how anyone can search and access the preserved information. So you can search places from the past in any language. So you can go to the archive.pt and try it in your own language. Obviously we have more, most of our content is in uh, Portuguese and also in English, but you can try it and tell us what you found. The interesting part, so you see here it looks like a, uh, search engine, but the interesting part are the calendars. This is where everything changes. Well, I, I usually say that time changes everything. So when we restrict the time span of your search, you get different results. And this is quite interesting. And this is how a web archive search engine is different from a, uh, a live web search engine. So if you know the address of a page, you can just type the URL and you get all the versions that we have archived. And you can just click on one of them and this is our replay interface, and you can see the news of the BBC website 10 years ago. And on the left, you can just read down along the uh, multiple versions that we have, and you can also browse the, the page as they were back in the past. So you can just um, go back in time. You can also search images from the past. So here I look for uh, Warsaw City, and you can also First, you get the, the images that we found related to the search query, but then you can click on the image and see where did the image appear. And this is very important to understand the context where the image appears. Okay, so you can also then visit also the web archive page. And all this information and all these services that I just briefly described can be uh, accessed through application programming interfaces. So we are a research infrastructure. We know that we'll never be able to fulfill the requirements of all the, the users, of all the research use cases. So we get information, preserve information, and provide access to information. And in this case, we provide uh, application programming interfaces so that other people and other researchers can on their turn um, develop innovative applications. So we have um, we have um, two APIs that are specific to our service that basically enable the exploitation of all our uh, functions, but then we also provide for interoperability the Memento API, which is international protocol, or the CDX server API, which is not an international protocol, but is widely supported by most web archives. So this way, our archive can interoperate with other web archives. Uh, to, uh, apps, ma applications made for other web archives can be applied on ours, and this is a very, very uh, useful way of, of developing things. So the best thing to see is one of these uh, 
application that was developed is called Tell Me Stories. So this basically generates, automatically generates uh, narratives about any subject based on online news from the past. This is really, really handy. It saves you a lot of time. So if you want to know something about someone or, or some, some event, you go to this uh, application that we did not develop. It was made by researchers. One of them was here, Adam. So he was one of, part of the team. Um, and uh, they were the winners of the Archive.pt award in 2018. So this is just right. It's great. Um, so about the collections and the automatic selection of content. So we decided to... We don't have a catalog, a, a pretty created catalog like libraries do. We don't have the resources to do that. And it's quite difficult to do it when you're dealing with so much information, but we decided to expose what we have. So at this address, archive.pt slash collections, you will get a, a, a spreadsheet where, that, where we present um, some metadata about the collections that we have. Many of them are related to Portugal, but many others are of inter international interest. Um, and we developed a low-cost methodology to automatically select and preserve online information about any topic. We have a paper on that that we actually, the motivation for this was to preserve the websites of uh, research and development projects. So um, we did this to preserve the, the web's attention that these are not, the, is not information that is uh, preserved by the publications office, that is being done by the publications office. These are the URLs of the websites of the projects that typically disappear when the project ends. So we did this, um, this research uh, and there are thousands of them, so it's really hard to find them by hand. So we, we developed this, this uh, methodology, and you can find how, how... And then we expand it to find information about any other topics, like elections. And that, that was actually what we did on, on follow-up experiments to preserve European Union web content. So we, in collaborations also with the publications office, we did a cross lingual collection about the 2019 European elections. So basically we did, um, we, first we thought that we would collect information about European elections regarding to Portugal, but then we thought, why don't, don't, can't we be a little bit more ambitious? And then we, we basically collected uh, a set of keywords about the elections, then we translate them using uh, automatic translation, then we ask help from the, the publications office of, of the European Union, and they helped us to correct all the, um, the, the translations correctly, 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 uh, stuck this word. And then we submit this information through a web search API, and then we got the URLs, and then we collect the information. So in a nutshell, this is the methodology. And we uh, have been preserving research and development project funded by the EU uh, since FP4, the ones that were still available. And now we're currently finishing the crawl that we did about uh, H2020 projects. So now I'm going to present some tools that anyone can use to support web preservation. So anyone can suggest the website to be preserved, okay? So it's a public form, just go to archive.pt slash suggest and you can submit any domain in any language. Just need to submit the home page and then we collect the remaining site. And this is um, a relatively simple function but really nice, actually, this is what I think. So we do the best we can when you're trying to crawl the information from the web to try to collect it at the best that we can. But sometimes you cannot do as good as you would like. So on the left, you can see a website where an image is missing. Um, it was about the, the coronavirus, I think in 2015. And the, the page looks obviously incomplete. But then if you go to the top right and you click on functions and then select complete page, we automatically, automatically go to the live web and to other web archives, try to get the information that is missing on this page and then you complete the page and the user gets the result that is on the right side. So there you can see the, a, a much more complete page. What is really nice about this is that then we keep this information and uh, afterwards it is integrated in archive.pt. So anyone can be a web curator of our collection. So anytime that you find something that is missing, just try to complete the page. And maybe you'll have some very uh, pleasant surprise. And this is a service that you created that is 
has, has been getting a big success, has, has been a great success within the public administration. So basically what happens is that uh, today is really easy to create websites. So they keep on appearing new websites for projects, for, service, for services, for events, for whatever. And then these websites, after the event, they get kind of um, abandoned. That's the, the, the correct word. So we abandoned our websites, but the cyber criminals don't abandon them. So after a while, they get hacked, and they are used for very bad things. And we only know this when it's too late, and usually the decision is that is shut down the website and lose all information. And this is really bad because this is our very useful websites. Um, and what basically what we did is we create one service that's called the kif.pt memorial. So we collect all the information from the website and then we redirect the domain to archive.pt and the original website can be shut down. So you can see this in practice. You can see here I'm looking on Google for UMIC Knowledge Society Agency. That was a governmental agency that was, uh, that was sh shut down that and it functions in 2012. So, but today you go to Google and you f look for this and you get the result. And then you click on the result and you get this warning saying that this agency no longer exists, but the content of the website was preserved by archive.pt, and then you can browse it on archive.pt, and then on the right, you can just access information. And this is really, really nice uh, uh, to hear, for instance, from a colleague of mine that she was accessing this for her work, and she was collecting information about training materials, but she didn't know that it was archive.pt or the memorial, but this, is, this maintains the information accessible. Okay, and another tool that we support, this is really also really simple to install, is that on most websites, when you uh, don't have a given content, a user goes to our website and you don't have the content, you just say, page not found. So basically, it's page not found, good luck. And this is not very pleasant to the user, but you can do more at a very low, low cost. So you just, on the, on the 404 not, page not found, just put one line of code, and if the page exists on archive.pt or any other web archive, you'll say, okay, sorry, this page cannot be found, but you can visit an earlier version of this page on a given uh, date. You can customize the, the, um, the warning, you can do what you feel more, more, more um, adequate to your case. And then people can visit an earlier version on archive.pt or any other web archive. So how can we explore the past web? So um, we have an annual award that basically grants awards to people that do works using archive.pt. So since 2018, we have we already did four editions. So you can uh, at least get to know 12 amazing and really useful works did over uh, archive.pt or web archives. So just browse archive.pt slash awards and you get really inspiring work about what you can do with the web archive. Every year I get surprised, and this is uh, something that's really good to promote web archives. And it has the support of the President of the Republic in Portugal, which is in the picture. So also web archives, you can create web design museums, like how else could you create web design museums without web archives? If you take a print screen, it's, it's not web design. It's an image. It does not have interaction. It's not hypertextual. So this is a use case that is kind of obvious. Um, and if you want to know more about how to explore the past web, you can attend training courses about web preservation and research. We have a training program. So at this time, it is uh, composed by four modules. So the first one is directed to any internet user. So it's basically we present summarily how, how can uh, uh, anyone use archive.pt. The second one introduces how to publish information that, so that it can be preserved. So it's more targeted at web authors or web developers. The third one is about the APIs. So this is more for developers or researchers. And the third, and the, sorry, and the fourth one, uh, do-it-yourself web archiving. This is really, really interesting because the tools these days enable anyone to be a web archivist as long as people know how to do it. And uh, we had some, we did this training and we have now some volunteer web archivists that do web archiving as they feel like it. 
for instance, there was a municipality that was doing web archiving about what was happening during the COVID uh, pandemic in their region. So they were very targeted and knew very well what to archive, and then they sent it to us. And this was really motivating work. So we also have um, videos in English, and most of our content is also available in English. We do these trainings in Portuguese or in English. Okay, so, so this is the forum um, about how to preserve the Polish web archives. So I, I'll try to present, in my opinion, what, which are the main challenges and some suggestions or recommendations to start a web archive. Okay, so uh, these are the three main challenges that I'm aware of. The first one is to hire and maintain skilled human resources. This is the most challenging uh, part of doing web archiving. First, because web archiving requires specialists, but is not teach at any university course. So there are courses on web archiving, but is not teach, is not even mentioned. So please let's get the professors at universities saying at least that there are web archives, okay, and there are web archivists, and this will be a very good start. Um, and the second one is that web archiving is big data. And you must, you, we must compete with internet giants like Google or Facebook to hire, and even harder to maintain our resources. Because after we train them, most of the times we cannot keep them for long. Um, the second part, or the second challenge, is the cost of dissemination. So after you do a very long uh, journey of creating a good web archive, really useful, you get the frustration of people not knowing them, knowing it. And you need a lot, a lot of resources to disseminate uh, uh, any web services. Again, uh, once again, you're competing for the attention of people with the world giants, with the m biggest companies in the world. And this is really hard because you have to, you have, it's really hard to sell something for free these days because everything looks to be for free. And now the third uh, challenge is the lack of awareness about the value of online information. So the, the information that basically rules our current world is published exclusively online. It does. You can, it's not paper, it's, it's online and it's digital. And if uh, many decision makers or politicians or journalists say information is power, that is the new oil, look into the past to see the future. Everybody says this every time and we cheer and it's true. However, societies passively lose most of their inf online information. This does not look like, okay, data is the new oil, but you keep on losing data. Information is power, but you keep on losing information. And what information do you lose? Basically, all of it, because everything is online. So something is wrong here, and this is a lack of awareness. I only have to say two or three sentences to anyone to understand this, but people need to hear these sentences. But I'm going to help you a little bit. So I'm going to show, instead of sentences, I'm going to show you numbers. So let's measure the value of preserving online information or the ways of not doing it. So I'm going to talk, present some gross estimation about the estimated on create the online information that is currently preserved in archive.pt, okay? So I went to Google and say that the average cost of a website uh, to, the, to make the design and development, and development is more or less uh, 5,600 euros per website, so we have 27 million. So s people in general, societies, companies, organizations spend 151,000 million euros in design and development. But when you're talking about content, here we add up 544,000 million euros. So we spend 695,000 million euros producing data that is online. It's a lot of money. How much is it? It's three times more than the gross domestic product of Portugal, that if Portugal was not preserving it, would be completely lost, as other countries, organizations are losing it. So the question that we ask ourselves, and you must ask our decision makers, can we afford to waste all this investment? Because this data, may not be completely lost. We're just, we're just losing our own data, but someone else might be keeping it. And it is, and they are. <laughs> okay, so we should at least keep our own data, okay? We spend all this money producing it. 
So recommendations to start a web archive on a more positive note, okay? So no part-time web archivists. Okay, this is too demanding, it's too complex. You have to think about it from day to night, every day. It's really hard work, so it requires full ded dedication. And start with a small but autonomous web archiving team so that it does not have to permanently compete for the resources, okay? So if you have only resources to have one person, just put one person. Don't put five persons that someday at a given time will work in web archiving. This will not work. At least have one web archivist, okay? Use existing tools and services, like webrecorder.net has a lot of great ready-to-use tools, or the archive it. Uh, cloud service all is really good. Third recommendation, listen to your users. Don't guess what they need. Hire user experience researchers. This is something that everybody that works in information systems like to do, is to develop systems that they guess uh, that, that will fulfill the user requirements. Usually that usually doesn't work. And the fourth is start small but perform the full workflow. So. Start by preserving a short list of websites, but perform the, perform the full preservation cycle. Collect, store, provide access, and disseminate the service. And this can be only your website or a few websites, but do the full workflow so that you can estimate the resources that you need. Okay, so um, I don't have time for more. I could talk a lot more. So please, if you like, read this book. That's why we wrote it. Uh, there's a preprint version available in open access. So it's not the final version, but you can give get a, a, an idea about um, how you can explore web archives, um, especially if you don't have time or patience to read the old book, because some parts are quite technical. Read the last part. It was written by Julien Massenet. It was the father of web archiving in Europe, and it's uh, a look into the future. So if you want to know how to build a web archive, this is a very good start by reading this, this part at least. So time's up. Keep in touch if you like. Um, send me an email or can subscribe to our mailing list in English or follow our news at our social networks. Thank you very much.